to page 159. We're going to sing page uh, hymn 394 as an opening hymn this morning. After the singing, I will attempt to offer prayer. After that, I'll ask Elder Mike Fulton to come forward, followed by Elder John Napier, followed by Elder Pete Boswell. Now, I, this is what I was looking for yesterday and I forgot to bring them. There is a pair of magnifying glasses now under the pulpit if you need them to help see. I plan on leaving them there in case I forget them again. <laughs> uh, I think the number twos, if I remember right. So, uh, so it's not a great deal of magnification, but it should be enough to get you through a service, get you through your uh, your speaking. So, uh, everybody thought I was looking for my for another Bible, but I wasn't. I was looking for the magnifying glasses, and I done forgot them. Three ninety four, hymn number, page one fifty nine. Uh, how strange is the
Thou who art, who art the sovereign ruler of the skies. Look down upon the, thy children that thou hast gathered together today. Look down upon us in love and mercy. We thank thee that thou hast put it into our hearts to be here. And we pray that thou would not leave us wanting, but that thou would feed us with that manna from on high, that thou would satisfy us with a drink from the river of the water of life, that thou would inspire our hearts, that thou would give us hearing ears and seeing eyes, that we might behold our Savior that we might see the Lord Jesus high and lifted up and exalted at thy right hand. Bless those that come before us today. Fill their mouths with honey from the rock. Give them thy words to say. Let us hear them as thy words. We pray for all those that are of our number that could not meet with us today. We pray that thou would be with them as well. That thou would touch them for good and with thy blessing. For it's in the name of our Lord Jesus we ask. Amen. Brother Michael. Elder Michael Fulton. Come forward. Speak as the Lord gives you utterance. Listen to that strange is the course and <clears throat> remind me of second verse of Psalm eighteen. <clears throat> the Lord is my rock. child of God feels that. You know, because you're strange is the course. We, uh, as you're walking along that course, and we talked about that yesterday, you know, the, they were in Egypt 400 years. But the Lord, he set a time stamp on it. And it didn't go one second past. He said, you ain't going to leave nothing there. And in like manner, he brought the little remnant out. He brought all the baggage, but it wasn't by our might. Well, it wasn't by our power because he is the rock. It says in, in my fortress, you know, think about how personal that is. Paul went over there in the seventh chapter of Romans it's a beautiful statement when you think about it. Everything he wrote through there, he was including himself. He didn't say, oh, wretched people that you are. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. <clears throat> he 
he said that he was the he was less than the least of all the saints for he knew and he was shown this rock and this fortress that although a little child of God <clears throat> with the man that said I believe but in the same exact breath he said what each and every little lamb says help thou my unbelief that's exactly what happens in a little child of God <clears throat> I think about the blind man <clears throat> the, the apostles were no different they said Lord who sinned did he sin or did his parents sin to cause this blindness upon him they were sinners it says all have sinned I said no I should have read it <clears throat> I said I've got stuff broke down but that don't matter <clears throat> But at the end of that, I think, is the most beautiful statement. They asked him, the Pharisees asked him, and he said, they're talking about Christ, and he said, whether he be a sinner or not, I don't know. I'm not going to judge him, because they were. Many, many times they come to him, and they, and they tempted him. One time they sent some people to go arrest him, and I, and I love it. They said, never a man ever spoke like this man. That's, that's what they said because his hour was not yet come. We believe that hard shall. It's as, it's as, it's as hard a shall that will ever be. <clears throat> but that blind man said whether he be a sinner or not I don't know but he said the one thing I do know that I was blind and now I see and how, how, how you can't get no more beautiful than that right there he was he didn't know he was, I mean, that man there knew he was blind by, by the natural sight. But when you're out here, you don't know you're blind <clears throat> until you're given that sight to see that one who is the rock, who is the fortress. He ha and he is the one. I think it continues. My, it says, my, and my deliverer. How many times? How many times is he going to deliver? How many times? Peter going under the water, and he said he and I and I and I've, and I've, and I've listened to Elder Paul on that sermon. I don't know how many times, and he said Peter didn't have time to come up with a big discourse on Lord, I'm drowning, and I. He said, said, save me. And that's what he said, and that's exactly what he meant. And the Lord reached down, and he had him the whole time. He walked on that water, and then, and then it said that, and, and, and then he lost his faith. No, that faith exercises us. We have never exercised our faith one minute of any second. It exercises us. I think about Abel. Can, 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 can Abel. And it and, and it says that, that they broke that they both brought all, all, all offerings. <clears throat> but it well I better read it. <laughs> There's times when you better not paraphrase already. I might need them magnet. And in process of time, I've heard John speak on that, it came to pass, it wasn't no accident, was it? Mm -hmm. That Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering, and Abel 
he also brought of the firstlings of his flock. But unto... Now, some people will say, but it says unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. It was both Cain and the offering. But it says... And he said, If thou and Cain talk with, and it, if thou doest well, and, 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 then, and then it says uh, about, about Abel, but then you go over here to Hebrews 11. And it's what Robert opened this whole service up with. Ain't it? Ain't it what he opened it up with? And I'll have to find it. It says by faith. That was the difference. By faith. And where does that faith come from? Ephesians 2 tells us that faith is a gift. That is who maketh you to, to, to differ. Now it always scares me to go to Ephesians 2 without walking through Ephesians 1 first. But yet it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. For what do you have that you were not given? And then when you go back and you think about that, about that Psalms, and that, and, and that He fights your battle, and He is the fortress, and He is the one that sustains you, everything that, 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 that is here, that is the galaxies and in the universe, and I don't know all those, all those terms, but it hangs on nothing but the power of an almighty God upon His will and upon His mercy and His counsel. And you can just keep going with, 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 with the adjectives as long as you want to, but it hangs on nothing but the power of an almighty God who rules and reigns. And when you are shown that God, and then, and then you read that, that second verse in, in Psalms, and you think, He is the one that fights my battle, and He, and he, is, the, and he is the rock of my fortress. And it talks about when, when He says that He reaches down and, and time, and time, and time, He brings you up out of that mire clay, and He will set you upon that rock. That is the one that we are here, the living God. That's the one that we are talking about. That is the good news that we are shown that. And like that blind man, he said, All I know, all I know is I was blind. I was blind, but now I see. And how much more do, how much more do, do you need to know? You can talk about all the doctrines and they're beautiful. You can go through them in the vital union and the, and, and the limited atonement and all, and all of those. But if you boil it down, that thief on the cross was just as much and a little elect lamb child of God as anyone in that kingdom. It, oh, he is our rock. He is our fortress. He is the one. And when you're shown that, oh, all I know is I was blind, but now I see. How much more? How much more can you can how much more can you ask? If it's at that if it, if you if if you're shown for fifty years or if you're shown for five minutes. <clears throat> Over in Luke, it talks about I had the election on my mind, and I spoke on it a couple of weeks ago. Oh. <clears throat> it's 
amazing how it's the exact opposite of what the world thinks. Jesus says, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent. Those ones John was baptizing there, and John was baptizing, and up come the Pharisees. They were just curious on what all this is going on here. He said, oh, you generation of vipers. <clears throat> it's hid from the wise and the prudent. From that one that we were just talking about. <clears throat> that one there. And here is Jesus. He, what, what is he doing? He says, I thank thee, O Father, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent. But who has he revealed them to? He tells you exactly who he has revealed them to. And isn't that how a little child of God feels? A little babe <coughs> has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. You know, I think the brother brought up John 3.16, and they go there a lot. And that's, that's, that's fine, because that's what they've been shown. But if they back up just a little bit, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. <clears throat> That's that one who said, I was blind, but now I see. Because it's a revealing. It was mentioned about Peter over there. I think Brother Robert mentioned that. Blessed art thou, Simon, son of Barjona. That father didn't reveal it. But that one there, that, 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 that Jesus said, I thank thee, O Father, that thou hast hid these things. And those things that he's talking about is what we have heard this weekend. It is the good news. It is the fact that Christ made the proclamation upon the cross. It is finished. But even beyond that, how many times did, Christ, did, did the Father say, This is my Son, in whom I am well pleased. The millions and millions and gallons of blood that was shed would not, would not equal one drop of that precious blood. <clears throat> that, that was a shadow of things to come. Of him right there, when the when when the Israelites were there in, in Egypt, it was a lamb. It was a lamb slain. You go back to the garden. <clears throat> Only by the shedding of blood is the remission of sins. And then and then and then and then he says he says, says here. Only by a birth from above. And then you go. 2.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth, to believe you must be made alive. And that is in a connection right there with right back here from that birth that is from above. That is the only way to, or for to believe you must be alive. There is no other way. There are two. There are two there. You have this vessel right here, but within within that vessel of a little child of God, you have you have that corruptible seed that kind that came from Adam, and you have that incorruptible seed, that spirit that that is only within a little child of God. 
and that believes, and that is the one that it is revealed uh -huh, unto. And that's how Peter, he could look at Christ and he say, You are the Son of God, for it was revealed. And he said, Blessed art thou, Peter, blessed. <clears throat> and, that's an, and that's each and every one little child of God. And then you take that and you, and, and, and you wrap it up. And then you go back and you say, He is our fortress. He is our foundation. He is our rock. That is the one that we are shown. And in our weakness, and how many times are there we, who we, are, are we weak? It's a constant day after day after day after day. But in that weakness, we are shown that He is the rock. There is a purpose in that weakness time and time and time again, and it never fails, for He is the one. <clears throat> he is the rock. He is the sure foundation that was laid, and there's no other foundation. Him and Him alone. He is that rock. He is that fortress. <clears throat> it is by Him, it is through Him, and it's for Him. And it is for a purpose that is worthy of Him each and every time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Mike. Come ahead, Brother John. Well, the neighbor, you've been here many times. I hope you feel completely at home. Well, most as much as you do it. All I can say is I feel unworthy of old places. <laughs> and not only that, I can prove it. <laughs> I've enjoyed our ingathering, seeing brethren and sisters from afar, reports from how the kingdom of God still flourishes. And I trust that God will lift us up till the next occasion to proclaim his truth and his name for certainly we can't do nothing within ourselves that's worthy. <clears throat> if we could only understand how beggarly and needy we are and get a glimpse of the God of this Bible, the sufficiency from Him, <clears throat> now I want to make a statement you can look at this book in one or two perspectives you can say it's conditioned which I deny or it's God's proclamation everything that happened in that Old Testament was by purpose and design set forth to be an example unto us. And if we can see those examples and apply them, it brings comfort to our heart. We think about Abraham and God told him, now look, I'm making a covenant with you, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he says, look here, you all are going down into Egypt for about 400 years. Not 399 and not 401. 400 years. And God stirred them up in remembrance of the covenant that he had made and the promise that he had made. 
if there was anything at all, my brethren, to the doctrine of conditional time salvation, please answer me why God did not give the children of Israel the Ten Commandments while they were in Egypt and says, when you perfect them, I'll bring you out. Well, we're going to go a different way, Bob. If you'll only fulfill these conditions and prove yourselves obedient, then I will deliver you. And that's what these religious heretics are feeding to a gullible nation and people today, rather than it is a sovereign God working everything according to the counsel of his own will. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? Had a leader down there of a great nation. I'll get to where I'm going here in Psalms, the second chapter. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Now, could we not sit for the rest of the day and reminisce on the condition of our country and the world? with that one thought in mind there. Mm -hmm. Vain things. Mm -hmm. Heather. Oh, that's those over in Africa. No, that ain't. That's my good Wayne County English. It ain't so. <laughs> it's the unregenerate. No matter where they live, that is a heather. Yes. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. We sing a song that God raises them to the throne and the following page, he strikes them down. Saying, let us break their bands asunder and a cast away the record from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. We've got to have the G6, G7 meeting for get our finances all lined up and how we're going to control things and what we're going to do, you know. If we don't do something, we're going to choke ourselves to death with emissions. Yeah. Well, it might come to fruitation, but it is only brought around because of our own ignorance. You know, if we went back to Garden Eden, we wouldn't have much emissions to worry about. But we're not going there. Thank God it's been there and it's been accomplished. And thank God, Daddy. Adam loved Mother Eve and partook of the fruit, so therefore the type would be fulfilled. He gave his life for his bride. They then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I. Now these preceding verses. Is man's plan. We get, we're getting a turnkey operation here. God says, wait a minute. Let's switch this thing on. Here's what I got planned. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. What a blessing that he said Zion. That's the city of God's dwelling. It's not a physical Jerusalem. It is not anything they're entitled to. It is the Zion where God abodes with his people. I will declare the decree the Lord saith unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. This psalm here starts unfolding the purpose of God with his son 
and him sending you forth and not in an attempt. Jesus Christ never attempted anything. He did it. It might look like to somebody it did. You know, over in John, the, the, the second chapter, there's a little verse there that seemed like nobody pays any attention. It said, Jesus had no need that man tell him what was in man, for he knew. That's where we get to the third chapter, John. That's before you get to the free so-called offer. God knows man better than man knows man. And as he sent his son, he came with a purpose. And beloved, it overrides from the beggar to the king. Go over here to the book of Daniel. We'll meet one of these kings. And a rather successful man, if I may say so. And you, I will, well, let me digress for a minute here. If you only read these he, so-called heathen kings and what they had, God gave that to them and for a purpose. He hired Nebuchadnezzar to do his bidding and paid him off with the land of Egypt. God no cheat. He hired him for a chastisement, listened unto his people, and he paid him with the land of, of Egypt. Book of Daniel. I believe we want to start over here in Chapter 7, what's happening, Pete? Did you all enjoy your rest and your sleep? Have you got this sleep thing down? Where does sleep come from? Where does it go? He takes it. to every individual. Oh, Daddy Abraham took out on his trip. Remember that? Had his wife with him. He said, now, sir, I want to talk to you about big, strong, faithful men for a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sir, you tell them that you're my sister. Because they might kill me. And I, 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 I don't know what, he, he went out by faith, right? Well, brother, he had faith like me and you that wavered until God kicked it in gear. And here they come to old King Abimelech. And what the King Abimelech said? Wow. You see that old Abraham's sister over there, I need me a wife like that. Now, why did he need a wife like that? Because he'd shut up the womb of Abimelech's wife. He didn't have an heir. He said, that would be a beautiful woman for me to have a child by. I think what I'm going to do, I'm getting me a wife from this foreigner sojourning through here. Tomorrow she's going to be mine. And God came into him in a dream. Touch her not. Abraham didn't say that. God said that. And you know why it had to be? You know why it had to be? Isaac had to be born. 
touch or not. What did the Benelix say? What are you doing? I would have sinned before God and taken her to be my wife. Now look at the evangelist, will you? Here comes faithful Abraham, and he's God's man of the hour, hiding behind his wife's skirt, and God forbid the king from taking her to be his wife. Now, did that make any difference in the situation? I believe it says that God opened up the womb of Abimelech's wife and she conceived. Huh? Conditional time salvation. Absolute decree by God. It couldn't have happened any other way. book of Daniel, I'll paraphrase this and I'll take the time because i got to go someplace else. Nebuchadnezzar, he's having a, a little bit of problem with his sleep. He's having dreams. I like people have dreams. Yeah. And he had a fella down there by the name of Phil Shasher. And he, all the king's astrologers and soothsayers couldn't figure it out. But he did. And he wanted to know what it meant. One of the most powerful kings on the face of the earth. Phil Shasher says unto him, your kingdom is going to be taken from you. And that was the first institution that I recall at the Hardshell Baptist Seminary. Because <laughs> they will cast you out and you'll eat grass like an oxen until the time passes over and says then your reasoning will return. Mm -hmm. What condition did he have to meet? He was the king on the throne and yet God had determined to take his kingdom from him and to teach him who rules heaven and earth, he sent him out in the pasture field mm -hmm. to eat grass like an oxen. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, if you're an old Baptist, you've made more than one trip to the pasture field to learn <laughs> who rules this earth, controls it, and gives it to whomever he wishes. Now I want to go back to the song. This is absolutely probably my favorite one. Psalms 139. And if you read this and say, that belongs to somebody else, you sure missed the point. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. His profitable doctrine, teaching, correction, and instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now we're going to go down the duty list, okay? Psalms 139. Forgive me for, I'd rather read this than any feeble thing come from my mouth. But I want it to be a consolation I trust to your heart. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. lot you don't want proclaimed out of that verse, but he knows it. And he has searched every crevice of your dark polluted heart and your depraved mind. 
You may not think that, but that's, that's the fact. The carnal mind, the natural mind is what? It is the enemy of God. I used to say it was at enemy. No, don't say that. It is the enemy of God, the carnal mind. Thou hast known me. How much? Thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. You think you've got to confess anything to God that you don't know about? Do you realize when it starts being a burden upon you because God has searched you and brought it to your attention, made that known what you've done in your little wicked past? But I'll tell you something else. He knows your thought afar off. I haven't even thought it yet. But God knows it. What did I read to you yesterday? In Habakkuk. And he will change his mind. Why? Because God had predestinated it. He knew his mind, and he's going to alter it to serve God's will and not his will. And thank God he does. Oh, Lord. If it was left in you and I to direct our feet, Oh, the garbage dumps we would be marred down in and the stench that we would waller in. But thank God has delivered us on the path that it may lead some places not uncomfortable. But there is a way out because he's already been there and he's marked it out. Thou knowest my downsetting, my uprising. Thou understandest. It doesn't say necessarily. No, I, I, I didn't phrase that right. Thou understandest. Not only does he know, he understands the thought and the motive behind it. That's more than just a rec- something off of a tape, a recollection. Thou knowest my thoughts, uh, my thought afar off. Thou compasses my path. I don't know if we'll make it up out of this weekend or not. We've got some things that's compassing us. What God do? He set them aside, packed your bags, and here you are. And thank God for them. I love you. Rejoice that you're here. Every one of you. Not by accident, but by purpose. Well, I think of it, you ought to take your concordance when you've got time so you can read that phrase by chance. I think it may happen twice in the entirety of the scripture because God is not a God of chance. Thou compassest my way. Lamentation, he said, he hath hedged me in. That I cannot turn. Heads. And it also says, straight is the way and now is the way. And that's not S T R A I G H T. S T R A I T. Did you ever read of the straits of the passages for the ship, ships that traverse commerce? That means there's no variable. You're compelled to pass through that. We've had to deal with that over around Yemen, trying to get oil out of here when we had some willy need presidents that wouldn't stand up for what we got. They passed through the straits, a good place to take an ambush. Thou compassest my path and my lying down. Lying down by chance? 
God put a rock in place for a feller that he had no knowledge of. But he laid his head down upon it and he saw the angels ascending and descending from heaven. He couldn't have slept nowhere else. And that beat the old boy's my pillar by far in the revelation that he got. That was God's pillow. Lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. How many are going to be honest to tell me? I'll let you know everything I do before I go. I'm happy if you know ever step of my ways. There have been some places we wish we hadn't been, if we're honest. We wish we wouldn't have had to been in that circumstances. But it happened, and it happened for a purpose, and it was no surprise unto God. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thy hand upon me. I don't know where y'all went through it, but children, I've had some experience in my life that I could not have done if it had not come from another source. And it wasn't pleasant. But I was enabled by God's grace to do what was necessary. Thou hast beset me behind. Those weren't accidents. That was purpose. And also before. Four years driving truck. And I want to tell you what, God looks after you people. Because you ain't got enough sense to get out of the way of a truck. I'm sorry. But he has preserved you and me to this day. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, it is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Oh, poor sinner, you've got to take and submit to the Lord tonight. Or he, he's going to give up on you. Whither shall I go from my, thy spirit? You reckon he's hiding place, Brother Cliff? You think he's someplace God can't bird dog him? Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee thy presence? Well, God's in heaven. He ain't got nothing to do with me. You woke up this morning, didn't you? He raised you off your bed. Maybe you get dressed. And somehow, miraculously, Timmy, they got all the people here. <laughs> we started on time. Now that takes a miracle from God. Of course, I, it ain't going to come from them girls I know better. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Why? Because he created it. It has a purpose as much as the heavens for the abode of his children. He has got the hell for the reprobate. And they go there justly. The only thing I see is unjust from my point of view is God give me hope. Well, do you deserve it, Pete? I don't feel I deserve a hope like that. And if thy righteous law should consign my soul to hell, if thou consign my soul to hell, thy righteous law dost deem it well. I don't want justice. I want mercy. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there thy hand shall lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. 
in the sea. On the Whale Express. Down to Pilate's house. That old pastor said, once more, will I look into Jerusalem? And they cast Jonah into the deep. And it doesn't say where is it. It could have been a goldfish that said, God prepared. So I don't care. Get down there. Seaweeds around his head. And how in the world he had any idea of any direction, he didn't. He said, yet once more will I look into Jerusalem. You ever been in the depths? You didn't know where you was at. Run from God. I ain't going up there and preach to them people. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, well, best and whatever it was, best him out. He said three little words that still ring down today. Before salvation is of the Lord. Went up to Nineveh and preached. And Lord, they had such a so-called revival. There was repentance. And was he ever elated? He went out to the side of the road, sat down, and started to God, I knew you'd do this, and I had to go through all that. Why, you got your purpose done. Why did you do this to me? I knew you was a merciful God, and you'd forgive them. <laughs> Brought him up a gourd, came up to shade him. And there's two animals that stick with me in particular. One of them's a little old cut worm. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, Jonah's over there in the shade. He needs a little more sunshine. <laughs> he's, he's lacking vitamin C. He's been in the belly of the whale, so we better get some more sun on him. <laughs> and the cut worm cut the vine and it wilted. Then they had another animal. I don't know how in the world these men knew how to train so well. But they had a rooster. And you know, the Lord, he, he likes animals. He took one of his apostles, hey, Brother Peter, you know before the cock crows three times, thou will have denied me thrice. Well, Peter wouldn't deny the Lord because he grabbed that sword, whacked off the high servant's ear. He was aiming for his head, but man, God picked the ear from Jesus, the Lord, and placed it back. And I want to lay something on you and take it home with it and put it on the wall. Jesus said, my son, Kingdom is not of this world, or else my servants would fight. And that was a prime time to launch an assault because they was coming to condemn him. And yet what did he do? He healed the wound of his enemy and told Peter, three times they will deny me before the cock crows. And the next morning, cock crow. Peter had not only denied, but he had cursed his Lord. Children, some of this is hard fact. I don't particularly care whether you like it or not. It shows you what deplorable things that we are in the flesh. We are nothing and less than nothing. People think that they are something in the sight of God. I know what you are. You're less than nothing. And 
apostle that had walked by his side and don't deny for one moment the sincerity in him but thou knowest my thoughts afar off thou hast beset me before and behind Peter could not have done anything else he was in Psalms 139 that rooster was in there that cut worm was in there everything was subject to the will of God Thou take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. Even there shall thy right hand lead me, shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, darkness hideth not thee. Him, number six in the cabinet. He in the thickest darkness dwells, mm-hmm. performs his work because conceived. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed me, possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. We live in a country where millions have been slaughtered at the altar of pleasure. Because it says, I have a right to do what I want to with my body. My Bible says that children are the gift of God. He withheld seed from Abimelech until the temptation by Sarah and the condemnation upon Abraham. Then he opened their womb up and they bore children. He went to Sarah when she was beyond bearing. And she conceived by our father Abraham and Isaac was born. And as Isaac was, so are we. We came from an impossible situation. But God brought forth the birth then. I have a covenant child here. That servant is not going to be your heir. He had told them now, if you read early on, they laugh at it. <laughs> Look at here. That ain't happening. It said at the set time. I like that. At the set time. It's not my time. Because hurry up. I, I want it now. God says, at the set time, a son will be born. This servant shall not be the heir. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I believe that's true of every individual. I don't think there's one born on this earth that's a surprise to God. It says there is a time to be born. Now they'll go and listen to a folk group sing that song and say, Oh boy, I like that, didn't you that? It's a time to be born. Time to die. Doesn't say you're just going to die. It says there's a time. I don't know about you, but I know people that have yearned for it. They wanted to go home, Pete. They had enough of the suffering of this old world and the corruption of this old body that they had to dwell in. Give me deliverance. Probably going to happen pretty soon to our dear brother Frank. But praise God, he's going to be in a far, far better condition than he is now, or you and I are. Our brother and I have went on before us. Hebrews says, they without us are not complete. If 
you know me, my interpretation of that verse is, you didn't have a picture in this one here, church. But God has got a family photograph spread across behind the table wherein he has reserved a seat for every elect child of God. Some of them are already there and seated. Some have not made it yet. That's not, I hate to use that word made, brother Doug. <laughs> we haven't been called there yet. We couldn't make it if we wanted to. Others have not been called there. And that picture, that is going to be complete of all that God gave to his son before the foundation of the world. Then it will be complete. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderful, marvelous, wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy work, and that my soul knoweth right well. Scratch this down if you don't have it. Verse 15. My substance was not hid from thee. Got a good friend having a debate with one of the better conditional primitive Baptists. He said, you know, I've been through some terrible, terrible experiences and he had. He had been active in the Korean War. And he said, you know, Elder, there wasn't a bullet made that could kill you. There was not a bullet made that could kill you. What do you mean? He pointed over and said, see that daughter you have over there? She had to be born. That is your substance. My substance was not hid from thee, yet being unperfect. Why do you have a problem with the eternal seed of Jesus Christ? Some of them are just not made manifest yet. But they're there and perfect in God's sight. And in thy book, not my book, and in thy book, all my members were written, not shall be, you don't have an invitation to put your name on the list. They were written, which in countenance were fashioned, God knows exactly what it's going to look like, when as yet there was none of them. And I'm telling you, we've got a wonderful God. His power, His purpose, His union with the family He's given unto His Son is perfect. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me. O oh God, how great is thy son of them. If, finally got a good if, if I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Not labor you with me. Let me say, I thank God for being in your presence. I wish Brother Acton could have been with us. But I wouldn't ask him to linger and suffer another day for my pleasure, Brother Doug. We mean more in the future. And we look, you talk about some of the great preachers you've had here, and that's just true. This is a been a legacy of kind of who's who were the old primitive Baptists. But you've had some wonderful, faithful servants 
within the church that God has used mightily to sustain it even unto this day. There is no little me and uh, little you and big me in God's sight. The purpose he has for each one shall be accomplished according to his purpose and his will. This God I've been telling you about, when you get struck down to your nothing, you're getting close to him. Old J.C. Philpott said, when I'm well, I don't need a physician. If the great physician was here, how many people would be asking for an attendant in his presence to heal their malady? Well, I haven't got no malady. Well, you haven't read Isaiah 1. He says you are corrupt from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. And I don't want to ask you to take an insult, God, me, or this church, and think that you can give your heart to Jesus. Because that is the most rotten septic tank and reservoir of ever sin known to man. And he, folks, he said, about, I'll take it away and give you a heart of flesh. It still beats in the old man, but oh Lord, we know what it is. And I wouldn't insult God by that, none whatsoever. And if he gives you a new heart, you can't hide it. It will be brought forth and made manifest until we come to the fullness in the presence of God and union in that eternal state that our God has predestinated for everyone in his family. And you know what? Jesus said, I came not to call the righteous. Huh. Reckon we'll leave anybody out in their minds. I don't need that. I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Scribes and the Pharisees started boasting themselves and what did he say? The publicans and the heart shall enter in the kingdom before you. <laughs> yeah. I know one for sure. And she's in the first chapter of Matthew in the genealogy of our Lord and Savior, Rahab the harlot. So I ain't got time preaching on that. We'd be here late, maybe. But I love it. God bless us. He reaches down and gets a poor sinner from the pit, lifts him up, puts his feet upon a solid rock and establishes his door. Whether it's Rahab or whether it's Lydia. Well, can God do the job? God's salvation goes from the womb to the tomb. John the Baptist was quickened while he was in his mother's womb. For he leaped for joy at the annunciation of his son. And a man that had reeled and cursed Jesus Christ looked at him and said, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. He didn't have a chance to go to the mourner's bench. He couldn't sign a pledge card, he couldn't go get baptized. Your Lord said to take that be a man in paradise. Two men died. One was wealthy and lived sumptuously all his life. And there's a fellow that laid outside his gate just wanting the crumbs that maybe the dog would miss that he might eat. You know what? 
Bible says and tells me the rich man died. Angels came to Lazarus. You know what made the difference? I know my sheep by name. The rich man didn't have a name written in glory, but Lazarus did. God bless you. Tell you what, let's stand up for a second and sing a real short one. Uh, we don't want to be very long because we want Brother Pete to feel at liberty here. 348 on page 141. Stretch a little bit here. My God, what endless pleasures dwell above at thy right hand. Mm -mm. We'll sing this uh, to the New Britain tune of Amazing Grace. My God, what endless pleasures dwell above at thy right hand. Out this morning. Amen. 
I could have sat all day and listened to you, brother. Mm -mm -mm. That straight you was talking about, that's the valley of the shadow of death we walk through every day. Yes, yes sir. God's been good to us. We know it's all about God's love. And y'all, I hope it don't bother you, but this old vessel's leaking. I've been crying for years. And I don't know how to get my yard. God's been good to us. I had some things to say this morning, and I had more thoughts right there than you could shake a stick at, but... God's done took them all away. <laughs> My goodness. You know, a lot of times these folks claim to be primitive Baptists. You hear some good stuff. But when he fine-tuned him in on those things that you read over, you don't hear that from most folks. It's what they don't say. And they can't help it a bit in the world. But uh, we come not to tell you a new story because it's the same old story. Amen. About God Almighty and his power and Jesus and his glory. The world can't separate the two of them. I don't know what I can say, but listen. Think about this for a minute. And I know what y'all have heard We've been blessed today, if I don't say anything. But this new generation we got out here, when I hear them talking, they giving all the power to Jesus Christ. They like they omitted God out of the whole picture. I was at a funeral a while back and talking to one of my cousins about the things that's going on in this world. And he said, it's all up to Jesus. My God had all the power. Jesus was our salvation. Just like it said in that verse yesterday in John 3, 18, uh, 17, that Jesus came not into the world, condemned it. The world was condemned already. Amen. And so many things that you were speaking on, the world can't see it because they're blinded. It's talking about God and his power. And here in, uh, I'd like to read, if I can, in uh, Isaiah 44. <laughs> Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant in Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou Jezreel, whom I have chosen. My God, this thing is all about God's chosen people. The world talks about believing upon Jesus' name. You can't believe unless it's been given to you. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, and that ain't right here. Amen. So I'm going to tell you, and I know I can't explain all these things, but it says, he chose the foolishness of preaching to save the souls of men. Mm -hmm. And I think that's right. But it ain't what we say. We get up here humbly, in a fearful place, to try to expound upon the word, and we wait till the preacher arrives. And that's our hope every time we get up here. Because mm -hmm. it's a fearful place without it. But Jacob, who I've chosen, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. And floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit out upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. This is describing our life and this is our hope that we live in. No matter how hard it gets, he's going to provide the water for our thirst. He's going to provide everything we need. And wherever we are, and floods upon dry ground. That shows you the power of God Almighty. How he, can, he don't have to intervene in a circumstance. He's already ordained that. And it's going to take place just like he said it to come forth. 
just like the brother was preaching right there about uh, Peter and Job. Jonah. I believe Jonah cried unto the Lord, why'd you cut my shade down, more or less? And he said, you had more compassion on that plant right there. And then you fussed at me about saving my people. That's on human nature. That's where we come from. We was, I love the book of Jonah, and uh, I don't know whether any of y'all knew him or not. Uh, Brother Bud Smith from California. One of the elders was preaching on Jonah one day, and Bud was sort of outspoken. He spoke up from back there, and he said, but when Jonah got where he was going, he had something to preach about. <laughs> we had an independent preacher one time told us that Jonah could have went by submissive will to the Lord and submitted to him and went straight there and been there in a little while. But he went to rough rap. But we know it won't but one rap. And it's significant of Jonah when he went through the fish's belly for three days. Is the death, burial, and resurrection, is that not right? He went through hell, buddy. He was schooled. In the pasture you talked about, which referred to the wilderness a whole lot. My God. We got a young elder down in uh, Texas. His name don't his name don't matter. He spoke well. And he had some troubles in his life. Two thousand fifteen. He said he couldn't stand before the people no more. God put him in the wilderness. His mama asked me down there one time, and she said, see if you can understand what he told me. He wrote her a note. And I can't tell you what it means, except he said, I believed a lie, and now I'm down for it. But to make a I told her that I hoped that he'd been stuck in the wilderness and when he come out there he'd have something to say. Yeah. I felt that from my heart when he came. God brought him back out of there. Right. Matter of fact, he's serving two churches in Texas now. But that's where we put the piece of school. My God. God uses these things train his people, to teach his people. We was talking about yesterday, I don't think I mentioned it up here, but God said he'd put those things away from you as far as the east is from the west but, and forget them, but he didn't take them from my mind. We remember what a creature this is. Yeah. In thy seed they shall spring up it's among the grass as well as by the waters. And we know how beautiful that is. That's my hope. I'm not bragging because I didn't do nothing about it. God's blessed me with four youngins and seven grandchildren that believe as strong as anybody could. There was a time I wondered if I was Job. And it might be taken away from me. But God's blessed me with them so far. They bring to light God's glory and all so many times to us, especially to the mother there, when she corrects them for something. They say, Mom, you really believe what you believe? When you tell us to be careful in all this stuff, God's going to look after us wherever we are. 
One shall say, I am the Lord's, and the other shall call himself by the name of Jacob, and another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord, and surname himself by the name of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And who, as I shall call and shall declare it and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee? From that time and have declared it, ye even my witness. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God I know, Amen. not any. Amen. That's my hope. Yeah. That my God, the one that says, when Moses asked him, who shall I say sent me? And he said, I am that I am. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The one that decreed all these things. The one that y'all spoke of said, so shall I say thought so shall it come to pass. Oh, we didn't have nothing to do with this thing. Over there in Job, I believe it asked one time, so where were you when I hung the stars in the sky? I didn't need your help then and I don't need it now. I done declared all these things and they shall come to pass. Everything that we suffer, everything that we go through going down the road this evening, God's already done ordained it to take place and it'll be for our glory, whatever it is. With the sickness, pain, affliction, we can rejoice in it. And he's done it for all the saints that we read about in here too. Look at old David. How many times in those songs did he say, his mercy endures forever. Because we continually need it. It's just not one time. Every day. There's another over there in Jeremiah. When my granddaughter died, Brother Lewis Johnson called me. I was troubled about it. But Brother Lewis gave me this scripture here. Jeremiah 1 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then say I, this old human here, Ah, oh Lord, behold, I cannot speak. I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever command thee, thou shalt speak. And be not afraid of their face, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee above nations and over the kingdoms to root out and pull out and to destroy and to throw down and to build and plant. God Almighty knew every one of us. And I do believe he knew us before the foundation of the world. And he ordained all the things we'd do. And when they say believe, all you got to do is believe. You can't believe on a sovereign God Almighty unless he draws you to do that. And you, the scripture that says he loved us before we first knew him, loved him. He loved us first. That's the only way. A natural man, as you said, is enmity against God. He can't do anything. He don't know anything. It's all carnal. We don't go out here and judge because we see a man hooking to his boat on Sunday morning. Next week might be the, way, the week that God strikes him down and shows him something. 
But that's the life and the walk they've be, been given to walk. And the ones that's not elected have been turned over to a reprobate mind and they won't never do no better. But we don't know who they are. And it don't say to have a reprobate mind is to have a chance. You've been turned down. It's just done. A done deal. The same it is with the elect of God Almighty. If you're in the family, you're in the family, and you can't get out if you wanted to, and if you thought you was in it, you don't want to get out. Our hope restores our salvation that we want to stay there. We want God to show us something. We beg unto him to show us things. But we're just like Peter. When I was a kid and I first heard something about reincarnation, it bothered me as a child to think when they called Pete, they dropped the R off of it, and I might have been Peter. I always believed that there was a supreme being and there was a God of all things. But I went the route of these going to Sunday school and teaching Sunday school and we're learning a lot of good history. Thank God for it. They tried to teach us to witness and I never did learn that deal. I don't mean to get up here and make jokes about stuff, but I remember when they'd knock on our door Thursday night and gun smoke was on. It upset me. <laughs> well, that's the truth. I didn't want to do that to nobody else. I didn't feel right. It was something there that wasn't real. One time I got talked into Saturday night going to a prayer meeting with the, some of the men of the church that we went to. And it scared me, brother. I didn't want to go back for more. Because they went in there and went to the morning's bench in the dark. And I didn't know what all this was. I mean, these good people, good people that they've walked on earth. But it was like going in there and praying to a pagan god. Everybody talking at the same time and moaning and groaning. But I've seen light to that scripture that it referred to since then about the groanings of the spirit from the almighty God. It don't have to be audible. It's what we feel and hear when we're made to see that we're nothing. And God Almighty is it all. And what is he will be. What is to be has done already been. We just got to get through it. And God Almighty has already fixed that way too. You mentioned yesterday in, uh, when we were talking I'm sure Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had thoughts about what might happen to them too. And they were willing to keep on serving God. That's because he gave it to them. And somebody else mentioned last night that we don't have the grace that we need all the time. I forget who mentioned it. He gives it to us when we need it. Them folks who was being burned at the stake couldn't sing Amazing Grace today for then, but they sung it then because God put it in their heart to do it. That's right. We was talking about our, how rough things has got now with all this COVID. I do believe that God's children can walk through fire and not be burned. But it don't make us go out here and jump in front of a truck, either. <laughs> but Brother John said, the children didn't walk into the fire. <sighs> they were thrown in there. And I believe you said yesterday, seven times hotter than they ever been before, and the ones that throw them in there were killed. But the revelation there 
of God revealing himself to the old king. Behold, and we throw three men into the fire, but the fourth I see is like the Son of God. You couldn't recognize him if he hadn't revealed himself. Why, my goodness. Somebody was on Facebook one time talking about that old thief he was talking about. And they said he won't baptize so he didn't go to heaven. And I said, my God, he done had a revelation. He recognized the Messiah. Remember me when you come into thy kingdom, O oh Lord. All we know is he was a thief. We don't know nothing about his life. He was a thief, and a thief does bad things. Never having a chance to do no good work. His good works is when he called upon the name of the Lord. Amen. And God Almighty purposed him to do it. I don't understand all the reading here. And never will, I don't guess. But uh, I need to get out of the way. But uh, I just look at, at the book here. And we keep one laying on our stand and we keep it. Elder Lynn brought it to our mind. You lay it with the back side up. That was an old tradition because most of the old elders felt that they wasn't worthy to open the word and reveal anything out of it. So they kept it back side up. I try to read. But if God don't impress you to read this book, it's nothing but a dead letter. You can read the newspaper and get about as much out of it. But Lord, when he shows you some things in it, little things, words that y'all brought out that you hadn't paid any attention to before. Like over there in Isaiah, where he prophesied that there would be a son born unto us. And the world can't see it. We keep saying this and we're grumbling against God when we talk about what's in here. But he said he came to save his people and his people are the ones that were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. Jesus would be a failure if it was a net thrown out here to see what it could catch. But that's what they preach. They catch some doozies, too. <laughs> I'm taking up your time. I love y'all. Oh, I don't know which one of y'all was talking about old Roberts the other day. But, uh, you know, as a kid, my family watched him about every day he come on TV. I didn't know no difference. I went into a home at a yard sale a few years ago. And I know this is just a story, but they had a Bible back there, had a pretty leather cover on it. I wanted the cover for my Bible to keep it from getting ragged. But I asked the lady if I could buy that cover, and she said, we don't sell Bibles. You take your Bible and cover and all. It won't fit my Bible. I still got that one that I use in the basement at home. And, I, and, I, and this don't mean nothing, but it's an old Robert's commemorative Bible. And it's a Bible like any other. In the back, it's got what he said about it. I don't read that. <laughs> but the old lady that had that Bible has got it written in just about all the way through. And verses marked. Evidently, she didn't have any family or any family that thought enough that they wanted her Bible. And I know that's natural. But from what she had written in there, she studied it, she searched it. I don't know what she believed. But it shows signs of a person that really studied the truth. But I still got it. I use this to study. If y'all find it in my house, no, I don't trust an old Roberts, but I got the Bible. I told Brother John the other night there that 
In my job, I worked at trash compactors a lot where the trash come in for illegal dumping and somebody laid a Bible up on a wall one day and uh, it's a Catholic Bible. I picked it up. Even though it's a Catholic Bible, I read in it and God blessed me to read the scriptures. Mm -hmm. If y'all find that at my house one day, and no, I wasn't a Catholic either. <laughs> but I couldn't throw it in the trash. Not that there's anything to it. The spirit of the Lord is what brings everything alive. This is a dead letter. Right. King James changed some words. It changed some interpretations. But it's still the truth that I believe in. Because yeah. God prints his word in people's hearts. Not in what they read. And not in their mind. But he gives it to them what they believe. And he's not going to do it to anybody that ain't here. But I do believe there was one person in the Old Testament that did believe. And I read the Old Testament and I seen it before I ever seen it written in the New Testament over there. Pharaoh was made to believe. He told them, Moses, let his children go. Take them out of here. But my God hardened his heart. He saw the evidences. It was like the people that saw him feeding the people with the fishes and the five loaves of bread and the five fishes out there. They seen it. They believed. And that's all they knew. And that's from I. But they want God Almighty so they couldn't do any different but to do what they felt like they had to do and what they was ordained to do. They followed him. That man's working miracles. Let's follow him and see what else he does. Some believed and some didn't. Sometimes I wonder if I'm just a fake too. Because I see what I am. But brothers and sisters, we serve a great God. That saw in the beginning. For whatever reason, he made this creation. That's God's business, but he did. He made people. He made Adam. He made them. He didn't make them. Subject to fall, he made it where they would because Jesus was already created back there as a redeemer. Mm -hmm. It all had to take place in the point in time. And he promised us that he would look after us and take care of us. Yes. The vision this world has about going to heaven, golden streets, gates made of pearls. I'm wondering if God didn't write a lot of this as an illusion to the world. Because if I read the scriptures right, we're not going to be looking for anything. We're going to be singing praises to God Almighty. Yes. And we're going to be part of the body and just glad we're there. And not with a natural mind, with a spiritual mind. There's an inscription on a tombstone of a Confederate colonel that I just read last year. You know, I knew some old folks in my community. And my grandpa went to the Southern Baptist Church. He said it had changed in his 87 years. But the only primitive Baptist Church we had in our community my well, grandpa told me that the dairy farmers went there because they didn't meet for once a month and dairy farming was a seven day a week job. So that's all I knew. But some of the dear old people that I knew growing up, I stopped there last year one day just to look at their little cemetery and I said, my God. I knew them old people. They never invited anybody to church as far as I know. But one of them, a daddy or grandpa was a colonel in the Confederate Army. And I said that to say this, on his tombstone is an inscription. And I hope that's mine. Asleep in hope of a glorious resurrection. I 
think that signifies what he believes? So, yes, sir. Because when that trump sounds and we come out of there, it's going to be a glorified body goes up. And we're going to be singing praises God Almighty. We're going to be singing songs that the angels can't sing. Amen. And that's the hope. Because to think that what I need to just go on. Some of them got to go get something to eat. Vicky, when Vicky and I got married, this is how we were. There's a song that's sung, and it's a beautiful, natural-minded song. I want to stroll over heaven with you. And young and in love, I couldn't think of nothing else no better. My goodness. <laughs> we get to heaven up there and be walking around looking at all the beauty. It's a beautiful song. I still think it's pretty good. But it ain't going to be like that. If it's like that, it's going to be taking the glory away from God Almighty. Because that's the reason for it all. It's all about God. He's reminded me that so much lately about it, what Elder Manley told me. He said, boy, it's all about God. And it is. With his purpose and his pleasure, everything's been done. And we're here doing this. They call it foolishness. But we're here for a purpose to do it. And we can't deny it. Some of our elders would call you and they'd say, you got anything to say? If you can sit back there, go ahead. I'm afraid of this place, but I'm more afraid not to come when I'm called upon. Because God's got a reason for it. Yeah. Love you, Brother Robert, Brother Richard, John, all y'all. And sister, I never met you before. <laughs> but I recognize when I come in. Can't explain those things. A few years ago, I went to Texas. I met people down there that I knew that I never had met before in my life. I could recognize the faces. It's a sweet thing that God gives his people. And it's a good thing to get a good night's sleep. You know, when you, Brother Robert, I'm going I'm to smoke on that here. When, uh, when you lay down to sleep at night and God puts you to sleep, you're near to death and as you'll ever be in your life, and you don't even know you're alive. And that's a good night's sleep when you can shut the lights out and wake up in the morning feeling refreshed. That's right. But God gives it, and God has to wake you up, as you said. Yeah. God will give us everything we need when we need it. Oh, well. I'm going to hush up. We had a dear old elder down there that was pastor of our churches for 40 some years. Some people didn't like him, but he was a true hard child. God had blessed him highly. He'd been about, through about three marriages. He put him through the ringer too, but he was blessed highly and esteemed elder to speak. And one time my son failed in a hayfield job of sticking his eye. And we went by his story run the next day. And showed him Matthew's eye. And just out of the blue, he said, You know how much God loved Jacob? I said, What? Yay, uh, David. He loved him a whole lot. He killed the life and he protected him. He said, David was out for God's eye. Yeah? He said, Take your finger and try to touch your eyeball. You can't touch your eyeball without your eyelid blinking. That's how protected David was. <laughs> Those things are wisdom. And brother, you remind me of Elder Lynn so much. And the reason I say that Told some of them it was like he had done picked up a dish 
track. And the more he run it, the more come out of it. And it never run dry. Stuff that you wouldn't think. And it was so beautiful. It just lift you up. And I thank you for bearing with me. And uh, we've had a wonderful weekend. May God be with us till we meet again. And uh, wherever it be. Brother, I think we can truly say it's good that we have been here. It's good that we have been here. I thought when talking about Jonah there, about an anecdote of Elder Wyatt down in North Carolina. He was in a train station. And a candlelight preacher always hung out in that train station and tried to argue with everybody that come along. And he got into it with Elder Wyatt. And Elder Wyatt was giving him all he could handle and more. And he said, well, now, I've been to, I, I can't remember what school it was, Gordon Conwell or some university. Where did you learn this? He said, why, well, I went to the College of Jonah. <laughs> Campbellite looked at him and said, well, I never heard of that one. Where is it? Looked at him and he said, the belly of hell. <laughs> to finish the story, the Campbellite left in a huff. The station master called Elder Wyatt over to him and said, uh, come here, sir. And he handed him a dollar. And he said, what's this for? He said, this man's been hanging out in this train station for two years, bothering every preacher that come through. And I told myself, the man that bested him, I'm going to give him a dollar. <laughs> Elder Wyatt scratched his head and said, if I'd have known Arminian hides was worth a dollar apiece in this town, I'd have skinned them all day. <laughs> Now that's a little levity, I know. But I do want to say one thing in closing, and I'm going to be brief if the Lord wills. Isaiah 33, 20 says this. Look upon Zion. Now I think everybody here today and yesterday has mentioned Zion at least once in their discourse to us. Look upon Zion. What is it? The city of our solemnities. Amen. Thine eyes. Now when you look at Zion, what are you going to see? Thine eyes shall see Jerusalem. Now let me tell you right now, it's not talking about the natural city over there where the temple used to be. It's talking about that Jerusalem which is from above that city that hath foundations, whose maker and builder is God. Upon Mount Zion, the new Jerusalem sits. As it comes down from heaven, from God, as a bride adorned for its husband. Thou shalt see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation. You know what that tells me? It's a city of peace. It's a city of peace. It's quiet. There's no tumult. It doesn't mean that the shout of the king isn't heard there. It doesn't mean that the voice of praise isn't lifted up. It means there's no strife. What do we have in this life? Most of the time. Strife. What do we have? Why, we've got conflict, don't we? We don't have peace like we'd like to have. 
You know, it's like that kind of Arminian song that starts off, when peace like a river attendeth my way. When peace like a river. Here it is, a quiet habitation. Listen, a tabernacle. Now, a tabernacle in, is a tent, a temporary dwelling. But this is a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. It's a dwelling place forever. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed, neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken. My goodness, the cords, if you left them out in the weather on a natural tent, they're going to get all kinds of corruption on them, and they're going to break. But not this one. It can't. This city was established by Almighty God as a dwelling place for his children forever. But there the glorious Lord will be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams wherein no galley with oars, neither gallant ship pass thereby. In other words, you're not going to get there by working. Amen. Row. No. There's no rowing, no galley with oars. You're not going to pro, uh, propel yourself up that river. No gallant ship either. In other words, you ain't going to get there in a big, fine yacht. Oh, no. You're going to be brought there with the poor, the needy, the lame, and the hog. You're going to be there hungry and thirsty. And this river of water, this broad river and streams is what is talked about in the book of Revelation. If you will read that in chapter, what is it, 22? I didn't intend to read it, but I think I'm going to have to. Sometimes, brethren, you just have to do things that you didn't think you were going to do. And he showed me a pure river of water of life clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of the Lamb, God and of the Lamb. Oh, my goodness gracious. Isn't that something? A river of water of life proceeding out from the throne. Where is that throne? It's in New Jerusalem, isn't it? Go back and, and read 21 and 22 Amen. in Revelation. It comes from this city the city of our solemnities, the place of quiet habitation for God's children. Now, I said all that to say this. We have had a foretaste of that today. This is God's Zion upon the earth today. We are in the meeting of the people of God which shows forth the kingdom on this earth. And we have been blessed. At least I have. I think you all have too. Oh, yeah. To rejoice in the greatness of our covenant God and our Savior who has done all things for his people. Everything. Left nothing to you, left nothing to me, and certainly left nothing to chance. The world, or should I say to the world, we are nothing but off scouring. Why, them old hard shells, they ain't nothing. They'll be all gone, I remember. Elder Poole telling the story on of Elder Carr down there, Snow Hill. Man hated the old Baptist. Come up to him one day. I saw in the paper you've got two funerals this week. Y'all dying by twos. There soon won't be none of you. <laughs> Elder Carr looked at him and said, "When the last one goes, you won't have time to swap horses." <laughs> That is the truth. That's the truth. God's children 
I want to leave you with one scripture to meditate on. I, I, I don't want to keep you here. But I do want you to think about this. And if I'd get in the right chapter, I'd be able to read it. I'm going to read four verses in Ephesians. Three, eight through eleven. Unto me, who am the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Now, this is where I want you to pay particular attention. Which is, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now, under the principalities and powers in the heavenlies, might be known by the congregation, by the assembly, the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want you all to consider that eternal purpose. Amen. How it was purposed in Christ. What is it that was purposed in Christ? He created all things according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, if the purpose was eternal, and my understanding of that word is correct, it had no beginning as far as time goes, mm -hmm. and it can have no ending as far as time goes. Mm -hmm. It is now. It is that type of purpose. So as we leave here today, I hope you'll consider that. Meditate upon it. If you desire to communicate about it, I'd be interested to hear what you think of that eternal purpose. Because it is the basis of all that God has done, both in the natural creation but more importantly, in the spiritual creation, uh -huh. when he gave his people to Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world as his bride, as his seed, and more importantly, or just as importantly, as his body. We have been blessed. I feel doubly blessed to have had all y'all's fellowship. It's wonderful to see Brother Boswell, Sister Big and Vicky again. Wonderful to see y'all from the church at Huntington. Wonderful for our members from afar to be here. But all y'all together is a double blessing. It's a double blessing because all y'all are here together. I thank you for your presence, and I hope that you'll be able to come again if we're blessed to have this meeting uh, next year, which I hope we will. And if we can make plans that far in advance, we're going to, if the Lord wills. You may now consider yourself dismissed, and I hope that the Lord would bless you in your travels back home and watch over you so you can come back.